Hey, welcome back. Today we've got a new deep dive on a Sony PVM. This one is a 20L2 and it's a professional grade CRT monitor with a tube that is 19 inches in size. It is a 4x3 format. Now this one is an analog only monitor so it only supports 480i video and 240p video and uh, any other higher resolution that is not going to be supported on this particular L series monitor. So this is actually one of Sony's last lines of CRT video monitors that was professional. So the information we've got here on the label tells us a serial number, but we also have a power rating where this will accept 100 to 240 volts and it can do 50 or 60 Hertz. So it can do PAL or NTSC. Now for inputs down here, we have two analog video inputs right here, line A and B. Line A does have composite video in and out in the form of B and C. And then you also have S video up here. Line B is simply composite. And then over here we have our RGB and sync, or uh, that can be switched to component video. So you can do uh, Y, P, B, P, R. We also have audio in and out, and then another set of audio in and out over here for an option slot which is right here. And this can accept one option card. You can remove these shielding plates right here and just slide in a card there that will add an additional input for you. A 20L2 does have a button board area and this button board allows you to switch between your inputs and your option cards and also do a couple of monitor checks and calibrations down here. You do have a full menu in this CRT with a service menu where you can go in and make deeper adjustments to things like color, geometry, etc. And then you do have your quick adjustments here for volume, contrast, phase, chroma, and brightness. Please do remember if you're using this for RGB, you'll only be able to use brightness and contrast for video controls. Chroma and phase will only work for all the other uh, video formats like composite, S-video, and component. All right, now that I've introduced you to the Sony 20L2, let's see what's wrong with this one. All right, guys, we've got this 20L2 here, and it's definitely got some issues. Notably, the colors are really low, the brightness is really low, and even when we crank it up, we can't get a pure image because the blue gun and even the green gun are slightly weaker than the red gun is. Now in today's video, we're going to do a capacitor kit on this one, and it's not a huge capacitor kit, but this is one of Save on Pat's cap kits, and it's specifically got changes for this model that Sony may have come out with in bulletins, and that's pretty common for these monitors to have some kind of bulletin update. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna do the cap kit on this, but the other thing we're gonna do is we're also gonna change this tube out. I got a 20L2 tube that was salvaged, so we're gonna try to swap that better tube out for this one. You can see quite well here that the red is much brighter than the green, and then it's even much, much more brighter than the blue. And that is with the blue and green completely maxed out in settings. Now if I crank up the brightness and contrast, I can make those wheels come up a little bit more, but that is maxed out completely on the monitor. We're still missing a good portion of our colors down in this way, so that's gonna contribute to us not having a bright picture. And that is a sign that the tube has worn down. So hopefully the new tube will look better than this. All right, this is not the easiest monitor to disassemble, so I'm gonna walk you through some steps. I've already completed some things uh, but what I'm trying to do is take the massive bundle of boards out at once and to do that you do have to disconnect a few points. First off there's a ground cable right here that was connected to the main board right there next to the flyback and that needs to be removed. And then a second ground cable was attached to our neck board here that needs to be removed. And there's also the neck board itself which was originally attached pretty much like this, it's pushed all the way in. And then there's our yoke ring similar to this piece right here, around here, but after 20 years, this plastic that was used, it always disintegrates. So that pretty much just breaks apart on the spacer that's holding the neck board. But don't worry, that literally has no functionality as far as performance is concerned on the monitor. And it's quite common for that to, fa to fail. Um, one other thing we'll have to have disconnected is our yoke, so that's been disconnected from down here and then there's one bundle of cables in the front here that has not been disconnected yet 
and that's down in this area um, and what it is is it's leading from our button board on the front and it follows up and it actually goes under the yoke around this side and I've traced the cable up to this package right here so it goes all the way from those button board and uh, into this board right here with these two plugs so this is one that has to be taken out we also had to remove the tally light from over here so that that all needs to be removed that way we can get this board out and also this degausser and power button connections were both removed from down here and then there was another ground connection on this side which was attached over here onto the actual shielding and that was removed and that should almost be everything else we'll also remove probably this one just because this grounding cable appears to go into the main boards so I'll also remove that after I disconnect all that stuff we should be able to pull these boards out there was one more cable I forgot down bunched in there and it's a red and white audio cable that connects to the speaker on the front make sure you pull that out and then you'll see that our whole board if we pull on it slightly it should move back a little bit forward so that means it's that portion's ready to pull and then this whole portion is coming with it too so we need to lift this off the brackets and first remove these screws which there have already been removed so that can be lifted up and kind of set to the side just like that and that way all this can come at once after we do this which is just discharge this CRT all right this one has a bleeder resistor in it so there's really not much danger here for me but I'm an expert and just in case something goes wrong don't try to do this yourself leave this to the experts there you go see there's no charge of any sort and even if I just cl click the metal from that to there I'm grounding that point out along there I mean that's not the safest way to do it obviously but when there's a bleeder resistor in these there's really um, most of the time there's no shocking electricity stored up in this but you always need to be aware that that could be possible if you're ever messing around in here now that that is completed we should be able to just pull our board right here let's see if everything comes out nice and clean and hopefully I didn't forget to disconnect something. Nope, look good so far. There we go. These are our two primary boards that have been serviced. We've got our C board here, which is our neck board. And that has had solder completely reflowed on all the components and then a cap kit done on it. That is actually part of the cap kit is that board. And then the other board that we're working on is this G board, which it has all the components for both power and deflection on here. But I did have the caps removed from the kit here, and you can see how they are sporadic between the board. Um, these are in the capacitor kit for Save on Pat. And if you are a Patreon member, you can head over to the Discord page and I'll have this capacitor kit listed there. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead now and install the capacitors back in this main board. Again, that's already been done on this board, but this board, um, this G board needs to have the capacitors installed. There's the holes on the back and uh, a nice look at that printed circuit board. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna install those capacitors and we'll clean these boards up and then we'll get them put back together our boards are done now. I've got them partially reassembled. Now I'm gonna reassemble them with the rest of these. And before I actually swap the tube out of this thing, we're gonna see if we get any improvement in picture from just the servicing that we've done so far. All right, we've got our monitor reassembled. Again, all these boards have now been serviced. I just like to do this as a test before I actually go and switch the tube to make sure there wasn't a mistake done by me, which is a good thing to do but I wanted to show you how we don't have really much of a change on this tube I, I do think that 
the green and red may be a little bit closer. Maybe the blue came up a little bit. That could just be the caps um, for the color, like allowances on those settings. Maybe they're working a little bit better with new those new caps, but we still have this very low color. And even if I max that out, I can max out the contrast and brightness and get those colors to come up. But again, this is maximum brightness. So tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble this thing and we're going to install a new tube and we're going to hopefully see if we can get it to go at its standard setting which is right about there we're going to see if we can make this pattern look any better than this just on the standard setting all right we're fully geared up here to do some chest cam footage what we're going to do is we're going to remove the tube from this bezel here on this 20L2. You can see I've already removed our boards. What I've got set up over here on my workbench is just a really soft mat and then some extra cushion go on this tube. However, that tube's not really gonna touch because the bezel should be flat against that yellow padding. So the way I'm gonna do this, just lean that forward and set it like that right there. Now there are some things I've already removed on this bezel and shell, and that's these ground points. There's a few around the monitor on each side, and I've removed those and then just put the screws right back in the same hole so I'll remember where they go exactly. We're removing these screws right here from each post. There's four of those, and then this should all come right out. So let's see if we could do that right now. All right, we've removed all the screws, and now the shielding with the degausser should just slip right up and out of the way. But something's hung up over here. It's, there's a ground connection back here. It's holding us up right here. It's just a Phillips head screw. But there's always something like this on these. I'm taken care of. This should lift right up and out of the way. And then here's our old tube. Let's get it up and out. Best way to do this is to grab it by the neck right here. Lift straight up. Set that right there for now. Check out this. This is our replacement donor tube. It's cleaned up. Now it's been sitting for years, so hopefully nothing happened to it while it was in storage, but we're going to move this over and put it in the spot here. But before I do that, I'm going to clean up the inside of this a little bit. Just set it down on the posts, make sure none of the wires are being pushed down. When you're reseating this, the biggest thing to do is make sure there's nothing like pinched, no cables being pinched. And now we can secure the four bolts back in the corners and set it back up and get it ready to test. All right, so we've got her back together. Everything's set up, double checked. And I do have RGB in the input so we can test that second. The first thing I wanna do is a simple power test and make sure everything is okay and again this is the first time i've done this since installing this tube so let's just see what happens okay hear the gong of the degausser i feel static on the tube and hear the tube energizing we do see rgb no sync on there and i do have the brightness let me turn that back to neutral position and it looks like we do have all our colors. Good. Let's go ahead and start the tube, or start the game down here. Let's check out the screen now. And there you have it. So I'll set up and show you some better pictures of this. Well, hey, I've made adjustments to our screen. And now I'm going to show you just how much better this looks with the new tube and the cap replacement and everything else. First off, I just want to pop right in here to the color bars and these are the same color bars that you saw earlier look we've expanded all the way into the other region here and this is with actually our settings kind of turned down because if i 
crank that contrast up now and the brightness you can see how much brighter that is compared to what we were earlier where we couldn't get any of that and then again if i turn it down to neutral on both of those look at that and the colors still staying all the way up here in this region where before man it was all the way over here and like maybe at the eight some it was just down in these this area so we have a lot more color now the screen looks really good and uh as far as the repairs are concerned this thing is good and done and ready to go hey well thanks again for joining me today on this deep dive into the sony pvm 20 l2 crt monitor i do think it's a great choice if you have one available to you if you're looking for a pvm and a crt is for any kind of analog video again this one does not do higher resolutions into the digital resolutions you'll need to upgrade and go for like an l5 monitor to do that but if you're just looking for something again that does analog video support and is a crt this is great it has all the great aspects of a crt plus it has amazing scan lines since it's a pvm and it's got that high resolution tube of 600 tv lines so there it is. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave me a like, and I will see you all next time with some more retro content. I see what bugs. I see what bugs.